uh, uh, minister, kilometers from one minister, coast to the other. What is the average cost of an electric vehicle in Canada? I, I don't know that by heart. We could provide that information to, to you by writing. <laughs> So let me get this straight. This is the guy that is doing the carbon tax, making all these changes, having us pay more money per year for absolutely everything in inflation. This guy doesn't know a simple number that you could go on Google and take six seconds to figure it out. Well, I'll tell you what the price is. Here's the price. A little over $100,000. And to find the price, you just have to go to Auto Trader because it's very hard to actually get it from a normal a dealer. So that's the price, $100,000. That's how much it costs for an electric car that he's pushing, that he doesn't have any idea what the cost is. Mr. Uh, finance guy. Let's keep going and listen to uh, Stephen. So you're going to be mandating Canadians to buy electric vehicles and you don't know the cost of them. Again, 50% by 2030, 100% by 2035. Most experts <clears throat> agree that by... 2024, 2025, there will be no cost difference between internal combustion engine and electric vehicles. So, Welcome to the future. It's 2024. Stephen did that like three years ago, that interview. Let's look at what uh, if the gas car and the electric car are the same price. Experts say, remember, experts. This is like that reporter saying some people say that you're this. People say that you're Trump or whatever. Well, he has some people that says gas and electrics are the same. So let's have a look. Now we know that the electric was a little over $100,000. And now let's look at a comparable car, a Honda Accord 2023, about the same number of kilometers, so 36,000. So according to me, that's about uh, maybe you know a little over three times the cost. So that didn't happen that electric vehicle and a gas vehicle are the same price. And remember, uh, Tesla is the top of the line electric car, a Honda Accord, I mean, you know, we're not talking here uh, uh, Lexus or, or Porsche or anything here. It's just a run-of-the-mill car tier two, right? And we're not even talking the kilometer difference that it can do. Now, as far as uh, he's not mandating, three years ago, oh, don't worry, there's no mandating. And you hear the voice in him. Well, he is mandating. So three years later, he he did do that. So I don't know if he... Uh, he lied about that or even like, you know, when they say triple, triple, triple the carbon tax. Oh, no, we won't do that. They do do it. They say whatever is at the moment to make you relax. And then years, a year later, then all of a sudden, boom, it hits you. That's exactly his entire plan. You know, when they say the car, uh, carbon tax will be over a thousand dollars a ton. Oh, no, no, no. Well, yeah, it is. It is. That, that is the whole plan. They just won't say it because it won't fr it'll freak everybody out. Let's keep watching uh, Gilbo here. Our mandate today, though, will come. Canadians are concerned about today. But we're not mandating anything today, sir. Okay. You're confident electric vehicles can survive minus 45 degrees across, going across the prairies with five charging stations? I, I don't own uh, an electric vehicle. I don't own a vehicle full stop, but my service vehicle is a fully electric, is 100% uh, EV, and I take the train as much as I can between Montreal and Ottawa, okay. but we take the car even in the winter, and it works. The two points on this, you shouldn't be bragging that you don't, have a car when you actually have a chauffeur driving you around like that doesn't uh, that doesn't cut it even if it is an electric car he he has a chauffeur driving him and they pay them him quite handsomely so and him taking the train back and forth from toronto to montreal uh, you know why doesn't he talk about his uh, carbon tax on his plane trips that he flies to china to talk about energy and also the other point here with in the winter well we recently found out in the winter how people can get stranded on there too. So everything coming out of his mouth is untrue. You notice that. Let's uh, keep watching. Yep. Norway, as you may know, okay. is a cold We're country. We're not talking about Norway. 50% of, of vehicles sold in the, in the cold country that is Norway are electric vehicles today. It can be done. Not the size of Canada, though. Uh, so they're right now... We're uh, encouraging. So Toyota, Toyota was in, char uh, in front of the committee here. Uh, a while back, and they said that basically the average cost of a uh, average cost of a zero emissions vehicle was fifty six thousand dollars, double the price of a gas powered vehicle. So, Minister, the average uh, median uh, household income in my riding is just below fifty thousand dollars. Not all Canadians make two hundred seventy thousand dollars like you, Minister. So, do you believe these vehicles are affordable? First, as I said, most experts agree that by 2024, 2035, there will be no cost difference between electric vehicle and internal combustion engine. 
You know, it was a great question. And from what I see, it's uh, two and a half times. So nearly three. The guy said it was two. So it uh, it's still double even now. So for Pierre and up here to, for Steven to, you know, bring stuff up in the future of how something's going to be affordable or not. He's not a scientist or anything. He's not a wacko scientist or anything like that. He's just a politician. And, you know, once you're finished your term in, cause he's not going to be around for 2035 anyways, at the end of it, no one can call you a, a liar or, or anything. Cause you're gone out of it. Like you can say anything you want in the future, but when that future comes up and you did not hit that target and even, you know, zero, uh, what is it called? A 1.5 centigrade uh, temperature change in 50 years from now with um, error rate of like 50%. Like you can say anything you want in the future, but you know, he should be actually predicting stuff in his four year term that he's done. And looking at this information that he's presented, it is inaccurate and it's, it's totally inaccurate. And he could sit in a little committee there and talk to some people and maybe get some hardball questions, but that's it. Like the rest of it is sitting in a bubble and hiding behind ex experts and limiting uh, credit media accreditation and paying the CBC and everyone to ask the questions like what shampoo do you use and you know, whatever. And that's it. The, the, you, you don't need to go and talk to actual real people. And that's really sad, Stephen. Let's uh, keep going. And our mandate comes years after after that. Five, the, the first part of the mandate comes in 2030. So way before uh, the, the, the cost difference between, between internal combustion engine and, and electric vehicles um, will, will come into force. And you have to, remind, you have to remember that right now, uh, EVs are more expensive to buy. They're way cheaper to operate. And if you, lo if you look at the full life cycle cost of well, let's look at the full life cycle cost and they're way cheaper to operate. Well, how come Hertz, who is a company that doesn't get corporate welfare, they are getting rid of a third of them because they are too much cost to operate. So how is that possible? How is Steven saying that it's way cheaper and look at the full life cycle? And what about the life cycle? Say the car does make it to 10 years or whatever. What happens to that battery? He's not even taken into the cost of what do they do with with all these uh, these chemicals after because he's not even thinking about that, uh, Stephen. And that's something he doesn't want to think about because he just cares about more taxes and pushing something through. This guy's a lot of experience and he doesn't care. He doesn't care about it. He only looks at what his view is and that's it. Let's uh, keep watching, uh, Stephen. Of, of owning and operating a vehicle, there are substantial... Um, uh, Epargne, um, my apologies. Savings. Savings. Thank you, Mr. Chair. There you go. Uh, that, 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 that can be done. So simply looking at the cost of, of purchasing the vehicle is only looking at half of the equation. Okay. Uh, Ten seconds. Mr. Oh, Mayor. my. Um, so you're... Oh, we're, Time flies when we're having fun. <laughs> Ten seconds. <laughs> that's right. I'm done. Yeah. Well, the other half of the equation is the production of the car, getting the cobalt and the lithium out of the ground from Africa and how they do it. So he doesn't even look at, at what the uh, cost is to get the car, get the min minerals out of the ground in the first place. So anyway, that's the end of Stephen's uh, time in the committee. And I hope you find this informative.